Giving them an internet connected device is almost like giving them a car. Free gaming cheat codes, free whatever, and there's no ads either. I'm suspicious. What not to post on social media? Never say this on a spam call. Here's a trick I use to track companies selling my data. Hello, I'm Damian Black, and welcome to the Cyber News Channel. Today, we'll be covering cybersecurity safety tips for parents and children. To help us do that, we'll be talking to our guest expert, author, TV host, and social media influencer, Kathy Pedraez, who has 2 million TikTok followers and specializes in web safety for kids. Kathy established her reputation as the mom friend after sharing a video about the contents of her first aid kit, which prepares her for everything from eye punctures to diabetic emergencies. The video went viral, garnering over 2 million views on TikTok and helping to launch Kathy's career as a major internet safety influencer. First question of which is why on your child's first day at school is it a really bad idea to post detailed pictures of them online of their first day at school? Yeah, I don't know if it's as common maybe abroad, but at least here in the US, there's always these chalkboards of the first day back to school kind of chalkboards. It has the teacher's name. It has sometimes their age or what grade they're in, their favorite things, you know, their favorite food, favorite pet, like these kinds of activities, favorite sports. What not to post on social media. First day of school chalkboards. They're great for our memories, but they often have a ton of information like your kid's teacher, school, grade, interest, and more, which can be used to engineer a scam or worse. Instead, keep that information private and do a generic post. And the problem is twofold. One, it obviously presents a physical problem if you're giving, you know, the school that the child's going to and what classroom they're in and all of this stuff. And, you know, maybe you get into a fight with the ex-boyfriend or something like that. And there's custody. Bet. So there's obviously physical concerns with that. But there's also a cyber concern because people can use that information to social engineer scams. Um, or they can use that information to guess passwords and things like that. You know, if your password is your son's name with their birthday or with your birthday, like this is information that's pretty easy to find probably on your social media profiles. <laughs> so yep. it definitely presents a risk. Okay, so next question for you for this segment is why nowadays should parents be very careful about letting their children have internet connected devices of their own? It's huge and obviously it's going to happen, right? You, everybody needs to be on the internet and like you can't keep them off of it. It would probably just detrimentally affect their career in the future if yeah. you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's more about, you know, twofold. One, having a really good relationship with them so that when they see things that are off, they tell you about it, right? When somebody in the school text chat group is talking about a... Uh, I don't know, whatever types of scam they got involved in, or maybe some kind of like exploitative scenario that they're in, that they're comfortable enough to come to their parents and be like, hey, mom, dad, you know, adult, whoever, this is what's happening. So that's number one. Um, but number two is just getting them familiar with the risks online. And it has to be an ongoing conversation because especially as a teenager, they're going to ignore you, right? If they're six, seven, eight years old, just starting to get their first like Roblox accounts or something like that, they're more likely to listen to the adult who tells them, you know, don't talk to strangers or don't do this. But once they're in that like older phase, parents know nothing and they know everything. So, um, you know, so it's, it's definitely an open conversation. And then it's an ongoing conversation about what are some of those risks? So the first thing that you would do when an, a child is going online is um, one, there are like kinds of courses online, you know, YouTube or whatever that can just, they're targeted towards children and can talk about some of those cybersecurity risks. And, you know, maybe they could take like a little certification program or something where they, they kind of show that they can recognize some of these scams. Number two would be when you are setting up the accounts, go into the settings, heighten all the security, privacy settings, filter out all the types of scam words. I mean, unfortunately, I know sometimes parents don't have the time to do this, but it is really important to 
take a few minutes, take a day to just kind of get familiar with the app, get familiar with the game. That way you know what risks your, your child is exposed to. Scam alert! You get a DM from someone asking you to vote for them in an influencer program. It looks like this. They ask for your phone number to send you the voting link, but what they're really doing is clicking forgot password on your account, and if you send them what they ask for, you'll get hacked. For example, on gaming, you could be on a public server where you're chatting with all types of strangers, or you can do like the private rooms. It depends on the type of game, of course, but you could do the private rooms where only your friends can join from school. And obviously if I had a six, seven, eight year old, they would only be allowed to be in, you know, the school yeah. chat because in these other groups, there's adults and there's adults pretending to be kids. And so it's not just scam artists. It's almost giving them an internet connected device is almost like giving them a car, right? You wouldn't give your uh, six year old or the teenager or something a car and be like, goodbye, okay. you're on your own. You would teach them how to drive, how to take care of your car, all of this. So it's it's the same concept and they have to be taught. That's right, because there's a big demand for um, raising awareness among adults of, about these sorts of issues, isn't there, Kathy? I mean, is this something that you'd be prepared? I know you already do it with your TikTok videos. Would you be prepared to do like a more in-depth program to, to cover this topic? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm actually, I'm working now on trying to do, um, through a cybersecurity firm, trying to do a course that's like aimed at kids so that, right. you know, okay just kind of teach them some of these things like don't download the cheat codes or uh, or really download anything without an adult looking at it. But the problem is that adults have to be familiar with this stuff too, right? Because if the kid comes to you and says, hey, can I fill out this quiz or can I download this app? The adult has to be able to say, to, to be able to look at it and vet it and say, yes, you yeah. can, this yeah. is safe or this is not safe. If they're totally unfamiliar, they're putting themselves at risk. How to protect your nudes from hackers. It's still a risk, but here's my advice. Put them in a password protected file, use cloud storage with end-to-end -end encryption, or put them on an external drive or SD card that's offline. And do not store them on any social media apps. Yeah, and tell us why should kids be extra careful about downloading, you know, that shiny new app that's come onto the market because there, there seem to be millions every week, don't they almost? Yeah, I mean, ideally, ideally the app stores have a little bit of vetting, right? I always like to look at reviews and things like that, but there have been ways, even in the Apple App Store, which is known to be a little bit harder to get into, um, there have been apps that will not let you use the app until you give it a review and it has to be like a three or like four or five star review. Like, obviously the app stores don't allow this, but there's, you know, there's people that get around it and until somebody finds it and reports it and they start paying attention, this kind of thing happens. With apps, it's definitely a little bit of a risk, but I say if you go with the reputable ones, right? Your your banking app and you, well, there's people that like fake banking apps too, but, <laughs> but if you, you know, you go maybe straight to their website, the bank website and go to the app store from there or something like that. If you go to with the ones that are reputable that you're familiar with, that's okay. If you're totally not familiar, I would take a second to go into Google and or whatever search engine and type in, you know, is blank app safe? See what comes up. I would, of course, always look at the privacy policies because some of these apps, you know, they just need the basic information like your your email or phone number, whatever, to be able to for the functionality of the app. But some of them are way more invasive with the type of data that they're collecting. For example, there was a Bible application. It's all it is is Bible verses, but it was tracking your um your location, your device ID, your phone number, your like all this information. It's like, why do I need to? Oh, and by the way, it was also owned by a Chinese company. But um, I was like, why do you why do I need to give all this information to be able to read Bible verses? Right. It's it's kind of strange. So, you know, you have you definitely have to be careful if you can minimize what you're downloading. That's ideal as well and then the other thing is anything that says free like i'm hesitant you know i mean obviously some apps like the amazon app is free but it's there's a reason why they want it to be free but um if it's like free vpn free gaming cheat codes free whatever and there's no ads either i'm suspicious because there's something tied into that and i saw a study from um a department in a government in australia they were looking at free VPN types of 
softwares and things like that. And it turned out that 75% of them were malicious. They had viruses or they weren't as secure as they were purporting to be. And so, you know, obviously when you download things, it's always a risk. And particularly with children, they're on the same Wi-Fi network as all their parents' devices, right? So if one of them is now, it's like a trickle effect. Uh, when someone messages your child telling them that they have been locked out of their account, their social media account or what have you, what should your child do? I just ignore them because they've been hacked. <laughs> yeah. Never say this on a spam call. The word yes. A scammer might say, can you hear me? Or ask you to confirm an address so that you'll say yes but they can use that recording to pretend being you calling your bank or for another scam. And this is why I don't answer the phone. So unfortunately, I mean, ignore the message. And then I would contact my friend through a different way, right? A scammer just contacted me through the social media profile or through the WhatsApp group. So I know that my friend has been hacked because I recognize this message as a red flag. So, but let's say I didn't recognize it. Let's just say my friend was asking for help. Either way, before you help them, contact them in a different way. Yeah. If you're not sure, if you don't have any of their information, the next time you see them at school, ask them, you know, yeah. before you start clicking on links or, or doing anything like that. And usually, usually you can kind of tell when something is going to be suspicious. Because if, if a friend just texts you, hey, I need help. Can you give me the homework? Okay, you're asking me to just give you the homework. But if you say, hey, I need help. Can you click on this link yeah. so that you can... Yeah. X, Y, Z, then that's different because now you're asking me to do something and you've also added the sense of urgency of, oh, I need help. Um, this is really, you know, important. And so I, it's hard to sometimes identify these types of red flags, especially as a kid. Uh, but if, if it's an ongoing conversation, if parents show them like, hey, this is the kind of scam that's going around social media right now. Um, actually right now I'm in the middle. I almost posted it yesterday, but I didn't, I was going to post it today. Instead, I have like a scam roundup kind of video of just like, Hey, these are some messages that are going around. If you see it, just know that they're fake. Okay. So next up, um, yeah, if so, if some twerp sends your child a message, a nasty message saying, Hey, you're on the top 10 ugly list at school. Um, kids can be cruel, can't they? Um, what should your child do in that situation? When you see a link, right, that's a red flag. Um, and, and that's a story that actually happened to my friend's school in Florida. And they ended up hacking pretty much the entire classroom because the entire classroom was on one WhatsApp group, right? So they can talk yes. and chat and whatever. And one person got hacked through, however, maybe social media or something, or they clicked, so maybe a family member got hacked and then it, you know, it trickled down. So one person in that classroom got hacked, sent that kind of message to the WhatsApp group. And now other kids are, you know, what do you mean? What's this? Blah, blah, blah. And almost everybody in the classroom ended up getting hacked because when you click on the link, it asks you for your login and it looks like a real page. And, you know, the kids go in, they put in their information. And actually my friends, the classroom where this happened and my friend works in cybersecurity, his kids were like the only ones who did didn't fall for it because yeah. he's constantly talking to them about this stuff yeah that's right because you know i'm aware that some people watching this interview you know they'll be saying oh come on i would never fall for that how could anyone be so stupid but let's face it people do fall for this kind of stuff all the time don't they i mean it can be very convincing right yeah i mean even i you know i've even almost fallen for one there was one that was um through facebook and basically they create a Facebook page. They use the Facebook logo, they do everything and they tag you in a post, but the tag is kind of like hidden. Eventually when you expand the post, you see it, but um, the tag is kind of hidden and it says, you know, you've, uh, I forgot what my message was, like a copyright violation, something like that. Because I'm never on Facebook, when I saw this, I mean, I'm on it, but like just browsing my feed, I'm not like very active on it as a social media platform. So when I saw this notification, I was like, what is this? And it really, it came from the page that says like Facebook community guidelines. And because, because of how they built that scam, I get a notification to my phone about it. Right. So it seems more legitimate than if someone were to randomly tag me like in a, um, a different kind of post. Anyways, I figured it out rather quickly when I saw that the link was, you know, all like mumbo jumboed. But in the beginning I was like, oh, what is this? Why am I getting a message from Facebook? And it's just the way it was built into the platform. Now, what I don't understand 
is why a platform like Facebook would not use AI to identify that another page that has nothing to do with them is uploading their logo <laughs> or using their name as the page. I'm like, I don't understand this, but. The next question, I will try and put it as delicately as possible, but why should uh, young couples be extra, extra careful about taking, let's put it, let's say explicit footage of each other, um, even though it may seem like a fun thing to do at the time? Of course, well, and the other problem is that, you know, they may not store it on their phone because they know that mom or whoever takes the phone at night to look yeah. at it or something or they you know they know that their phone could get taken away at any time because they get in trouble or whatever so oftentimes what will happen is they'll store it in their drafts of their social media apps so they can store it in their uh, snapchat private camera roll or they can store it in their instagram drafts or you know maybe even their TikTok drafts and the problem is as we know we don't own these platforms i wish i did <laughs> <laughs> but we don't own them. And so when somebody gets hacked through these platforms, which is very likely given the fact that oftentimes kids aren't using like the two factor authentication and all of this, if you beef up your security settings, you protect yourself a little bit better. But anyways, they reuse passwords. And so it's it's likely that eventually somebody will get into this account and then they can publish these very intimate private images and they don't care that they're children and good luck finding the person you know, several cr countries away across the ocean who hacked your child's account. It's just, so I would just remember that, well, I mean, ideally, if you can, if you want it to be the safest way possible, right, you would have a physical photo that never lives anywhere digitally. That's unlikely, probably unrealistic. So I would say bare minimum is just don't store this stuff on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, like these kinds of things because we don't own them and when you forget your password or it gets hacked what happens to those photos yeah so would you anticipate that you know in the next 10 or 20 years there's going to be a general shift in let's call it cyber consciousness and people becoming more aware of these pitfalls that we've been discussing today or, or do you think it will be like a constant game of cat and mouse and you know trying to keep up with you know what the latest cyber scam is be interested to hear your take on that in closing kathy i hope so i think one of the challenges that i've seen with some of the younger generations is there's this kind of perspective of you know oh my privacy doesn't matter because there is no privacy privacy doesn't exist right. anymore my data is being collected from everywhere and it's like okay I, I get it. I understand what you're saying, but that doesn't mean we just throw our hands up and say, fine, this is how it is. Like, no, you don't, it doesn't have to be that way. And there's still uh, opportunities to shift that. Okay. And that's it for today. Um, thanks very much, Kathy, for talking to Cyber News. Um, it's always a pleasure to hear your thoughts and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. I know. I feel like Oh, talking about this kind of thing, you can go in obviously a million different directions. Well, it's but and I could talk about it for hours too. But um, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Cyber News channel. We hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you'd like to access more videos like this, uh, click on the button to subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.